Good morning and thank you for joining us. In today's lesson, we'll be looking at the laws of exponents, specifically going from law 1 all the way to law 4, okay? So, without further ado, let's get stuck in straight away, okay? So, looking at um, law number 1 first, I'll use this example to explain law number 1. So, that is where we are given, for example, a to the power of 5, a to the power of 2. So, law 1 is going to tell us that where the bases are the same and we are timesing, we will add exponents, okay? So, when we multiply and bases are the same, we're adding exponents. So, what that means is our bases are the same here, so we'll have a over there and we'll have 5 plus 2, okay? So, you can see the bases are the same. We kept that base and we just added the exponents, right? And then our final answer comes out to... 5 plus 2 is 7. So that is a to the power of 7. Looking at another example here, we have 4m to the power of 3 dot, which means times, okay? That means multiply. 5m to the power of 4. So, looking at this, we have... So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the num first, okay? The coefficient first, then we'll look at the variable, okay? So we can see we have m here, so that is of course the same base. So we're going to use the law of exp first law of exponents once again. So 4 times 5 is going to give me 20. And then m, this is going to be 3 plus 4. See there, we're just adding those exponents. We times the numbers as usual. Then when it comes to the exponents, we are adding them when the bases are the same. Now we get our final answer of 20m to the power of 7. And then I'll, oops, my bad. I'll skip no line. Um, our last example here for the first law of exponents. We're going to have 2xy times 3x squared y times 4x squared y squared okay so looking at this once again what we'll do is we'll look at timesing the, the coefficients first right so that's 2 times 3 times 4 that is going to give us an answer of 24 so now we'll look at the variable x first right so we'll times all the x together so that's x this is obviously to the power of 1 and so that's going to be 1 plus 2, that's 3 plus 2 is 5. Okay, so that's x to the power of 5 over there, and then y. So y to the power of 1, y to the power of 1. So that's 1, that's 2, and that's 4. y to the power of 4. So that's all we did, we added those exponents where the bases were the same. And that is law 1 of exponents. Looking at law number 2 now example that I'll use to explain this is going to be x to the power of 5 divided by x to the power of 2 which can also be written as x to the power of 5 over x to the power of 2 right so <clears throat> what happens here is this law states that when we are dividing the same bases right then we are minusing the exponents, okay? So the bases are the same here, right? So we keep that base, x, and we say 5 minus 2 this time, okay? So that's 5 minus 2. And our final answer here is going to be x to the power of 3. Now our next example of here, we have negative 20a to the power of 7 over minus 4a to the power of 3 okay so looking at this once again we'll look at that number first okay that coefficient in front of the variable right so we'll say negative 20 divided by negative 4 that is a negative divided by negative so we end up getting a positive 5 right and then we have a remember now same basis minus those exponents 7 minus 3 okay so you minus the bottom from the top and then our final answer here comes out to 5a to the power of 4 
And then our last example now for law number two is going to be 2a to the power of 3 times 6a to the power of 2 divided by 3a. So here you can see we've sort of combined law 1 and law 2 here, where we're looking at the top here, and this is going to be law 1 of exponents because we are timesing, right? And then law 2 of exponents is that dividing part, right? So let's go through these steps. So looking at the top, we're going to go 2 times 6, that's going to be 12, a 3 plus 2, that's going to be 12, a to the power of 5, right? And then we're going to do, we're just going to put that over that 3a that was given to us initially. And then what's going to happen is we're going to divide the numbers. 12 divided by 3 gives me 4a. That's 5 minus 1. So it's 4a to the power of 4. And that over there is going to be our final answer. Moving on now to law number 3. I'm going to be explaining with this example over here. We have b squared to the power of 5. So this says when we are putting a power to a power, what's going to happen is we are going to, <clears throat> we're going to times the exponents, okay? So this exponent here is going to times that power, right? So what ends up happening is we have b 2 times 5, okay? So that's b 2 times 5, and we have b to the power of 10. Cool. And then if we're looking at another example of law number 3 over here, we can have 2x to the power of 3, and that's going to be squared. Okay? So now, once again, that's a power to a power. But also now, this is another step that's included over here. Sorry, I want to do this underneath. There's another step that is included, and that's going to be we need to square the coefficient, okay? Because remember, this all bracket is being squared. So we're squaring that coefficient, we get a 4, right? But we will still be timesing the exponents, okay? So when it comes to the coefficient, we'll still follow the rule, which is squaring it. But when it comes to the coefficient, we'll be following the third law, which is timesing, okay? And that will give us our final answer here of 4x to the power of 6. Then if you're looking at law number 4 now, the example I'll be using to explain this one is going to be open brackets x squared y and that's squared. So law 4 is basically going to tell us that when we have a bracket like this with more than one term inside, right? Or more than one variable, right? And that's going to be squared or whatever power is there. This power applies to each variable and, ter and term inside the brackets, okay? So basically what I'm trying to say is that what it ends up looking like is x 2 times 2, y 1 times 2, because remember y was initially to the power of 1, right? So basically what this law is saying that everything inside the bracket has to be affected by this exponent outside, okay? And that's what we've done here. And then our final answer comes out to x to the power of 4, y to the power of 2. Looking at another example of this one over here, we're going to have 3x to the power of 3, y to the power of 5, and this all to the power of 3 over there. So what ends up happening now is we're going to have first the number, remember, that number has to follow that rule still, it's being cubed, right? So 3 cubed is going to give me 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 gives me 27. And then when it comes to our variables, remember each variable is affected by that exponent as well. So that's going to be x3 three times 3, y5 times 3. So we have 27x9, y to the power 15, which is then going to be our final answer over there. And here for our final example over here, we're just going to have a nice mix up of law number 2 and 4. Okay. So what's happening here is 
we're going to have negative 3x3. This is more a level question that you can expect to have in your tests, okay? Sorry, this is to the power of 3. And then we have 3xy squared, and that is going to be squared as well. So you can see there, the fourth law of exponents here in that we have multiple variables here that are being affected by that exponent, and then the second law of exponents where we have the division, okay? So we're going to work on that top bracket first. So what's going to happen is we cubing that negative 3. So negative 3 times negative 3 gives me positive 9. Positive 9 times negative 3, remember, we still times by negative 3, so that gives us negative 27. So we get x, 3 times 3 gives us 9. y, 5 times 3 gives us 15. And then we're going to work out that bottom bracket now. 3 squared is going to give us 9. Now, with that x, we're going to have x squared and y to the power of 4. And so now we can go ahead and do the second law of exponents. So we have negative 27 divided by 9. That's going to give us a negative 3. Okay, that's a positive divided by a negative divided by a positive. So we still get a negative number. And then that x is 9 minus 2, that is 7. And then y is 15 minus 4. And that is the power of 11. Okay, so... No matter how complicated they can try and make an example, look, you should just not be intimidated by it and follow the steps, okay? All we did here was we knew which laws we had to go through. We times out the brackets, we times out the brackets over there with that power. And once we did that, we could easily go ahead and break up our second law into obviously doing the number first, then focusing on each variable, okay? So anyways, that is going to do it for today's recorded lesson. Thank you very much for joining us.